Good morning. Uh, this is Private Friend Incorporated. Miss JJ Diamond, Deja, Jacqueline Richardson, whatever y'all call me. Um, good morning. Um, I had an experience yesterday. Um, I went down to one of the alternative schools um, with my grandson. He was sent to an uh, alternative school here in Charlotte called Turning Point. And um, it's a wonderful thing to have a school that will take the kids that um, be acting out in regular school. You know, um, I tell every pe- people every day, you know, they think my life is, is uh, 100% uh, great. You know, but when you're raising a child that has a lot of issues and wants to be in the in crowd and, you know, keep getting in trouble, you know, you wind up anywhere, <laughs> uh, courts, alternative schools, you know, uh, this all, all kind of places, you know, um, however, being that I am, um, a nonprofit that helps as much as I possibly can in the community, you know, um, at this time, I'm unable to help the school because we have lack of funding. So I'm asking that some of you guys, uh, businesses out there in Charlotte, and not even businesses, people that, working people every day, you know, um, if y'all can help the school. They're bringing these kids in. For a small time, some for longer longer time than others, uh, to give them discipline and guidance, um, so they can learn how to maintain life and get through school without going to jail or getting hurt, and you know, just learn what they need to do to live, you know, accordingly. Orderly, you know. Um, however, one of their requirements at the school is that they wear uniform, you know, because, you know, that's the big thing today, you know, uniform. Don't get me wrong. I mean, turn the point, this is nothing against you guys because I don't know who chose y'all uniforms. However, I don't think y'all uniforms are appropriate for alternative school. Um, alternative means, you know, um, you're second to the first, you know. Um, and even though see the uh, Charlotte Mecklenburg schools wear uniform, and those uniforms that they wear are set for public schools. You guys are not public schools. I mean, you're a public school, but you're alternative school. So, with that being said, I think the uniform should be a little bit more intense than a regular public school, you know, um, maybe army fatigue or all black, you know, um, they need to look the same from head to toe. And that the reason why I'm saying this, and this is just coming from Private Friend Incorporated, because in the work world... There's a lot of jobs that wear uniform. And then uniforms are complete from head to toe. Okay. I want to give a shout out to um, Officer Richardson. You know, if you look at his uniform, we're not trying to make them be police officers. But what I'm saying is, when you look at a uniform and you're trying to uh, uh, teach a child... um, the, the meaning behind a uniform, it should be all in one, you know. Um, even when they go to jail, they wear all in one, you know. I mean, not saying that they got to wear a jumper, but what I mean is all one color. 
you know, that's the, that's, that's my opinion. I mean, you know, I don't have to change anything. I'm still willing to help you guys, um, try to get some uniforms in there for them kids because I'm using myself for instance, you know, I'm lacking funding for my nonprofit, you know, and, um, all I can do right now is pay my own bills, you know, I can't think about anything else, um, cause I have to survive as well. Um, and the parents will be asked to supply uniforms. Now, when we prepare our children for school, some of us prepare our children for school two months in advance, a month in advance. You know, you don't walk through the door and be told that your child can't go to school if they don't have this particular uniform. So what does that do? Um, make some parents say, hey, well, then you're not going there. You know, we'll figure out another way because I just don't have it. But who does that hurt? That hurts the child. It doesn't hurt the parent. It doesn't hurt the school. It hurts the child. So that's why I'm calling out um, to Charlotte. And I'm asking Charlotte, can they focus on Turning Point um, this this month and the upcoming year? I know Christmas is coming and a lot of uh, companies are doing the, the Christmas uh, thing. But, you know, my nonprofit works all year round. We don't just do Christmas, you know. Um, we do events with the kids. We work with the kids, you know, uh, to try to keep them from going to schools like Turning Point. Um, however, this company needs y'all help all year round, you know, um, because there's new kids coming in every day. They may get into a fight at school, might, you know, get thrown out, suspended. You know, here in Charlotte Mecklenburg schools, it's been so many times you get suspended. Then you're sent to alternative school. You know, that's just the way it works. Don't work only that way here in Charlotte. I've experienced that in New York. I experienced it in um, Maryland, you know. These different uh, alternative schools uh, are open so these kids can get what they need before they become 18. And it really gets hard. Um, I'm just asking, you know, different companies to support the school, you know. As you look on my website, you know, you all may see a sign called. Um, we support the defiant ones. Um, I think that's what it says. I'm not sure. I haven't been on my website in so long. Um, but yeah, you know, they need support too. You know, you may have 10 children that act out and just because they got that love and support that they needed, they turn out to be good kids, you know? You might have one that just want to be continue to be defiant and there's nothing you can do with them. But nine out of ten may come back. OK, you know, most of the time, people, when these kids are going through things, a lot of the times the families may be going through things. I'm not saying all the time, you know, um, that can cause children to act out and do things that they shouldn't do. You know, um, sometimes they may have a mental disability or, you know, they're having a hard time learning, you know, uh, peer pressure. You know, there's a lot of things that kids go through. You know, I'm, I'm going to use myself, for instance. You know, I was in, in um, top grades in school, you know, in the Bronx. And I was chosen to go to the Bronx High School of Science. And, um, because I did really well, but I wanted to be with the in crowd with the sports, you know, and, um, I didn't go to Bronx High School of Science. I went to D with Clinton. Then I transferred from D with Clinton to MLK. And when I sit back and I look at my life now, even though, don't get me wrong, I don't regret anything that I've I've learned because that's why I put so much back into the community mentally and physically. Um, I should have took the route 
up going to the Bronx High School of Science because science is what I love, you know. Um, but I didn't want to be that geek. <laughs> I wanted to be in the in crowd. So, you know, with that being said, it's like you don't know which way to turn when you're young, you know. And if you don't have that guidance for your parents to say, but this is what you're going to do. And when you get out of my house, then you can do what you want to do. See, I didn't have that. So I had to make that choice on my own. And I did. And it didn't go as the way I I, I could have had it go. You know, um, excuse me, I'm still, I'm still a little sleepy this morning. But I had to get up and do this podcast um, because we really need to help Turning Point um, with the uniforms or whatever the other things they may need, you know, um, to help the school and help these kids progress. Um, I want to shout out, um, Mr. Johnson. I met him yesterday. Nice. Seems like a very nice guy. He was willing to help as much as he could. You know, um, I met another guy. I forgot his name, but shout out to him too. You know who you are. And um, shout out to Officer Richardson. He was taking the kids out uh, to volunteer. You know, I'm big on volunteering, guys. So, you know, that was that was an A plus for me. You know, um, anytime people volunteer their time, that's a big thing, you know, because time is valued. And when you put your time into doing something good for others, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful feeling, you know. However... I just want to bring to the attention of the city that the school needs help with helping these families and kids get into school, you know, um, and not have to worry about where they're going to get all of these things so they can go to school, you know. So I I had to um, definitely get up this morning and make a podcast on it. And uh, talk to you guys about it. Uh, if you want to drop off anything at the school, any um, any uniforms, they need them for girls and boys, middle school and high school. Uh, blue for middle school, burgundy for high school. Uh, they wear beige pants and black pants, and I believe blue. Um, you know the, the khakis, the khaki pants. Um, they also need belts uh, with no logos on them. Um, they also need coats with no hoods, you know, jackets with no hoods. Uh, what else they may need? Um, they wear black black shoes, black boots, sneakers. Um, so these are the things that these kids may need coming into this school because the transition is so fast. Sometimes it's so hard for the parents to get what's needed, you know. Um, and they need help, you know. Coming through the door, they shouldn't have to say, well, I don't know if I'm coming tomorrow, you know. It should be okay. I'll see you tomorrow. You come get fitted for your uniform and get started. You know, that's how it should be. You know, and I realize, you know, funding is hard for some of these schools because they have so many people to pay. So many things that's got to be done, you know, the appropriate way to stay open, you know, and God forbid if somebody took a lesser pay (laughs) uh, to donate back because they're trying to uh, feed their family. So that's understandable as well. Um, but you can um, definitely donate uh, to Turning Point and help these kids be success- successful because you don't want them at home or in the streets where they, when they should be in school. You know, all children should be in school and go to school, learn, you know, they try to get out of school. Because they need it. They don't need everything we, they teach at school. But they need majority of it. So, you know, with that being said, you know, um, we need to keep these kids in school so they can learn, you know. And I'm going to 
now give you y'all the um, address to drop off anything that um, Turning Point may need. You know, and feel free to, you know, call them up and ask them, hey, is there any other supplies y'all may need? You know, um, you know, because there's people out here with money. You know, don't 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 let the state fool you. Don't let these people fool you. There's people out here with money and they walk around every day, you know, and don't have nothing to do with their damn money. So you can put it towards a good cause, you know, help the kids. You know, you got people out here helping these kids with Christmas gifts, you know, help the kids be able to get an education, you know. And then you got to remember, too, it's the law. You know, they got to go to school. You know, that's just what it is. You know, some parents choose to homeschool their kids. Like, I'm one of them. I, I do work with my kid at home. You know, I mean, she still goes to school, but I do work with her at home. And she goes to school and learn a little bit more, you know. So we have to work together to, to keep these, teaching these kids, you know, and, and helping these kids. Okay, um, the address, the turning point is 8701 Moores Chapel Road, Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I don't know the zip code. I, I am so sorry about that. Um, but that is the, the, um, the address. And, um, y'all can give them a call. I believe I put the wrong number, um, up on my Instagram and Facebook, the wrong telephone number. I will be calling that number today and double check it. Um, I do apologize because I, I have so much that I be doing. Oh, Jesus, y'all just don't know how much I, I be doing in a day, you know, and I be having stuff written down all over the place, you know, and my assistant, he's working on one thing, and then I'm over here working on another, and, you know, it, it's like... You go crazy <laughs> with all the paperwork that come through your hands daily, you know, or the telephone numbers and addresses and, you know, it's just crazy. And I'm thankful that I do have an assistant to help me now. You know, it took me a long time to get an assistant. You know, people just didn't want to work. So, you know, but I finally got somebody that's willing to help. You know, a lot of the things um, that I can't get to. Uh, he makes sure he he gets to it for me, you know, and continue to market so we can get bigger and bigger, you know. Um, shout out to my assistant, Dana. Um, and this is just what it is, you know, when you're building businesses, you know, it's not an easy task, people, you know. Um, there's going to be times where you just don't make any money. You know, people are just not looking at you at that time or you're not getting the donations, you know. But just remember, people, if you want to donate to Private Friend Incorporated, you can always go on our website, www.msjjdiamond.com. Hit the Private Friend Incorporated tab and hit the donation button. All our donations goes back into the community with the kids, um, whether we feed them, um, do crabs with them, take them out. Um, this is what we do. Um, but I can't do it by myself. I can't continue to, you know, break myself to, um, help the communities, you know, and I, I love doing it, you know, because it keeps them out of trouble, you know, and, you know, you never know when a kid is going home to nothing, no food, you know, so always make sure they eat, you know, they're happy, you know, this is the way we do things, you know, they, they're able to come and get water when they need it, you know, and, you know, even if they need clothes, you know, we, um, we give them clothes, so these are the things that we're asking, um, donations for, we're asking for, of course, cash, food, um, clothing, water, um, Anything that I can teach them, take a day out and teach if you have things in mind. Um, like when it comes to crafts, you know, I do a lot of uh, research on crafts and the kids love it, especially the little ones and the girls. They love doing crafts. You know, we made bowls. We don't tape everything, guys, because I just can't do it all the time. You know, it's a lot of work when you're trying to tape these shows and, um, 
t- I mean, tape these events. You know, if it's big events, I'll do it. But when sometimes I just can't do it, you know, because I have so much going on, you know, especially with my own family life. So I don't get to show y'all everything we do, but they do. They do a lot, whether y'all know it or not. You know, and I'm always looking for volunteers to come in and help me as well, you know, because there's girls and boys and it's hard for me by myself to manage all them children. You know, um, people think it's easy, but it's not, you know, because you have to watch everything they do. You don't want nobody getting hurt. You know, you don't want them fighting, you know, so. This is just what it is, you know. And it takes a big toll on me. That's why I have to get my rest, you know. I, sometimes I get sick, you know, from just being up long term, doing stuff with these kids. And, you know, I'm getting older, so I have to rest. Well, I used to rest a lot when I was a child, so. But, I mean, when I was younger, is what I'm saying. Because um, rest is the key, you know. You get your rest, you can be successful in anything you're trying to do, you know. Uh, but I just want to, you know, let people know that this is what we do to keep uh, the kids, you know, safe. You know, I've been doing nonprofit work before I even came legal. Nonprofit work since I was 24 years old. Um, out there taking up donations to do things for the kids and, you know, um, having barbecue parties for them. You know, I've been doing it since I was very, very young. You know, um, having different events for them. You know, I started young. I moved it from Bronx, New York. I went to Buffalo, New York. I did not so much in Maryland, but I did do some things in Maryland. And now here I'm in Charlotte, you know. um, And we're starting to do things here, you know. Um, I would love to have more events for the kids, you know, because they love to be outside and playing, you know. So, these are the things um, that Private Friend Incorporated does, you know. Um, I will get back with y'all tomorrow about the telephone number, but you can always Google Turning Point in Charlotte, 8701 Morse Chapel Road, and get their number and call them up and say, hey, um, I heard y'all needed some donations for... Uniforms, you know, what time is the best time to drop off, you know, or um, I want to send y'all a check so y'all can buy some uniforms for these kids, you know. Um, we want to make sure that these kids have what's needed. We want to make sure that they don't have to worry. Kids are not supposed to worry, people. You know, this is why these kids today have so many problems in school. You know, my daughter said to me the other day, um, we were talking about Christmas and, um, you know, I, I had to let her know. I said, you know, mommy don't have much money, you know, but she got to pay, pay the bills, you know, so Christmas may not be, you know, what you are used to. And, um, Charlotte doesn't have the Christmas assistant that I know about, <laughs> you know, their Christmas assistant is totally different from what I've seen in my upcoming, you know, so, you're not going to get much, you know, and she's like, okay, you know, so then I said, oh, damn, why did I tell her that? What's wrong with you, Jack? I'm starting to get like these people. So I said to her, uh, no, she said to me, mom, I understand, you know, you don't have much money, so don't worry about getting me, you know, X, Y, and Z. And I said, I, I just, like, Turn to 360 because I forgot how I was raised, you know, earlier because I'm learning bad habits from these people, you know, and I'm like, don't you worry about that. It's not your job to worry about what is in my pocket and what I need to do for you, you know, and that's the way children are supposed to be raised. They're not supposed to be worrying about what's going on with their parent because they shouldn't even know, you know. It's our jobs as parents to make sure that they're happy and they don't wor- wake up worrying about the next day or what's going on, you know. I mean, they can know some things, you know, because sometimes we run into issues in life, you know, that they just you have to tell them, you know, like when I lost my home up in Maryland, 
You know, how do you tell kids that we got to leave our three-story town home? It, it, it's really hard. And then they said, where are we going? Oh, we're going to stay with this person or that person. They're looking at you like you're crazy. Like, why? We, we good, you know? <laughs> and, and sometimes you have to explain it to them, you know? But for the most part, until that point comes, let them be happy. Let them be free, you know? Because transition hurts kids. People don't understand. It hurts us adults. We just deal with it a little bit better. But imagine a kid that don't understand life. You know? My, my grandson told me one day, you took the house away from us. And I'm like, I didn't take anything away from y'all. I didn't have any money. <laughs> when you don't have money coming in, you can't pay bills. You know? But they don't understand that. You know, they think my pretty face, you know, pays the bills. No, it doesn't. You know, I have to put work in somewhere to get a check, <laughs> you know, to pay the bills, you know. Um, however, he's now starting to learn this, you know. Took him a while, but he really was upset. He thought I just said, I'm putting y'all in the streets. Because y'all are not appreciative, you know. And I'm, I, I really had to explain to them, there was no money to pay the bills. And when you don't pay your bills, they put you out. <laughs> they cut your stuff off, you know. I, I thank God. That's one thing I thank God of, that they never had to experience getting their stuff cut off, like their lights and, you know, um, whatever cable we're using, you know. Um, they never experienced that, but they did experience, the, you know, the um, marshals coming to padlock the doors, you know. And, um, I mean, Egypt, she's little. She she may not remember, but Jair remembers, Dejour remembers, you know. So, you know, that was like a, a bad transition in their life, you know, that they went through. And then right after losing my mother, you know, we went through so much at in one time, you know, and when you go through these things, this is what make these children act out, you know, you know, sometimes you don't, you don't give them the attention that they want, you know, or need, because some kids need attention, you know, like my, my, my baby Egypt, love her to death, but she needs attention, and I have to give it to her or she's going to act out. That's just what it is, you know. So, you know, there's other kids out here in the world that's like that as well. If you don't give them attention, you know, they act out. Now, my oldest son, he don't like too much attention. You give him attention, then he start acting out because he don't want to be bothered, you know. And then you got Jair. He's... Both ways, you know, he can take some attention on, you know, depending on how he feels, you know. So every child is different. But transitions hurt them, you know. And um, it makes them feel scared, you know. Because they don't know what's coming next. You know, so as adults... We have to come together to make them feel secure. You know, when these kids start feeling insecure and scared and acting out and we're wondering why. If you sit them down, talk to them or talk to the families. You know, a lot of these, that's another thing. People, people, please. When you go out here for help, be honest. You know, a closed mouth don't get fed. You know, you can't sit there because you're embarrassed about what happened to your life or whatever the case may be. It's called life. You know, if we, if everything was perfect, the world wouldn't go around. You know. So when you go out here for help, you know, because you're going through whatever you're going through, be honest. You don't have to lie about the situation because believe me, somebody ain't been through what you've been through or maybe even worse. And 
I say it again. A closed mouth don't get fed. You know? So, when you need help, ask for it. You know? People may get tired of it, but you keep asking until you get the help that you need. And you never know. God may bless you the moment you ask. You know, depending on how needy um, you are. That's another thing, people. We have so much pride, but not enough pride. And I always say that to people. You know, a lot of people don't understand what that means, but I'm going to explain it to you guys. We have enough pride to fall, but not enough pride to ask someone for help so we don't fall. Okay? I always use that phrase. If you're hungry, you don't want to go out and ask nobody to help feed you because you're hungry because of your pride. But if you don't eat, you can die. But if you ask somebody and they help you, you might get it. Then you'll live to the next day. And as long as you have health in your body, you can go out the next day and make something happen for yourself. You know, like, I, I'm big up to... um the, the panhandlers, <laughs> you know, I mean, I couldn't go out there and panhandle. That's just not my, my thing. But I say big up to them because they have enough pride to say, hey, you know, some of them use their money for drugs. Some of them really need to feed their families, you know, and um, they be out there and they be like, can you please help me? <laughs> you know, and sometimes when I got change of money, I just throw it at them. Like, you know, whatever you do with it is what you do with it. But here you go, because you had enough pride to ask, you know, hey, you know, I ran into this one um, panhandler, you know, I don't keep money on me, you know, I do uh, cards, you know, I was trained to do cards, you know, for many, 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 many years. And um, I ran into a, um, a panhandler I was coming from work one day in Charlotte. And my stomach was hurting real bad, you know, because I got bad stomach issues and bad allergy issues, you know. However, um, I was coming and I was feeling bad this particular day. I took some medicine and made my stomach hurt and now I got gas and I'm like, oh, I'm I'm trying to eat some Tums. I'm at the light and he's standing there looking at me like, you got anything to give me? And I'm like, sir, I ain't got nothing. All I got is some Tums. And he was like, well, what are those? I said, It helps your stomach clear up gas and, you know, pain and stuff like that. And he was like, ooh, I need that. I said, it's going to make you poop. He said, I don't care. He said, give it to me. I need it. I need a cleaning out. He said, because my stomach hurt me too. I said, you might have gas if you haven't been eating properly. You know, he said, yeah, that's that's probably the problem. He took the thumbs. (laughs) You you know, know, the, 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 the point that I'm trying to make to you people is if you don't ask, you don't get the help, you know. So it, it 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 makes sense to ask. You know, you got all these rich people. You got Michael Jordan walking around here. You got Cam Newton walking around here. You know, all these big stars with all this money, they can put back into their communities. Turning point, we're gonna get them. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna get what these kids need. You know. Because I'm going to continue to ask, you know, <laughs> that's just what it is, you know, and we can have some fundraising events, you know, and get these kids what they need, you know, that's just what it is. And that's just, you know, some people dedicate their lives to make them put, put a smile on someone else's face. And that's what I've done all my life. You know, some of us are chosen for that, you know, um, and it's a wonderful feeling, people. When you can give back and, you know, and like right now I can't give back financially, but I give back another way, you know. Um, I'm always finding every day a way to give back to somebody and anybody, you know, daily, you know. 
I find a way, you know, or it just comes to me sometime, you know. And um, I'm a strong believer in God, you know, that God puts it in us, you know. If you have it to provide, you know, give it, you know. You, but you can't give everything now because you can't break yourself, you know, um, trying to give back. And I learned that experience as well, you know. Everything is a learning experience, you know, because then you don't have nothing, you know. Um, I had to shut down and... And, you know, tell some people, like, hey, I have nothing to give you now. You know, that's just what it is. But you never know. God may bless us by the end of the year. And I may have more to say, hey, come on, let's let's do some events. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's have fun, kids. You know, but that's just what it is, you know. Um, You can follow Miss JJ Diamond on Instagram at Miss JJ Diamond. You can follow um, Ms. J.J. Diamond on Facebook at Ms. J.J. Diamond official page and also on Twitter, uh, Ms. J.J. Diamond or Queen 50. Um, I'm trying to build my um, my Queen 50 page. So y'all follow me there. You know, that's more of a retail page. Um, Some of y'all know that I have um, Ms. J.J. Diamond shoe brand. I also teamed up with um, Shop Vita and designed a few items. Um, those are for sale on Shop Vita, Miss JJ Diamond signature page. Um, so y'all can um, get on there and see what y'all like and purchase and help give back. Because you know I get most of my money once my bills is paid. My money go to the kids. You know that's what makes me happy. You know to see the smiles on the kids' faces. You know. I don't want to see them arguing and fighting, you know. I don't, I don't like to see that, you know. I didn't have to grow up like that. And I come from the South Bronx, you know. We always had fun. It wasn't all that arguing and fighting and, you know, it was none of that, you know. So we're trying to teach the kids, especially the girls, we're trying to teach them how to be ladies, you know. You know, starting to put the, the, the little ones in heels, you know, they starting to like the heels now. So they want to be ladies and be dainty. You know, soon I'm going to teach them how to model. You know, um, I went to modeling school in New York. Shout out to New York. You know, there's a lot of things that I learned in New York and um, I take it with me to other states. You know, uh, me and my daughter, Shaquana, we went to modeling school. So, you know, the things that I've learned, I've always, te- I always teach the kids, you know, teach them how to cook, how to sew. They, they, um, my next step is they're going to be making a song soon, and um, I'm going to teach them how to write songs. And, you know, this is what we do, you know. Shout out to Lawrence Orr, you know, because y'all teaching them how to read and comprehend. Once they can get past that, then I can teach them how to write a song. So, you know. It's good when you have um, more than one organization working together, you know. You know, um, that's the big thing with these organizations. They always want to take all the shine instead of working together with other organizations. And we both get big, you know, and and, and help the communities and, and smile all at the same time and be able to say, hey, we did this. And look now, these kids is happy. These kids are successful. You know, so, you know, that's just what it is, people. We, we got to work together. Working together is the key. You know, no one man can do it by himself. Jesus Christ couldn't even do it by himself. You know, he had a bunch of disciples and, you know, that helped him out. You know, when when people go to war, countries go to war, they don't send one man out there. They send thousands of men out there, you know. So you can't do it by yourself, you know, and that's just what it is. My power may be stronger than your power. Your power may be stronger than my power, you know, but it it doesn't matter. We're working together, you know, and that's how we become successful. You know, so that's just what it is, you know. And remember, people, we are a 501c3 tax-exempt company. So when you donate, uh, especially the businesses, the businesses, you know, because um, on the taxes now, um, they're giving small tax breaks for the regular working people. You know, you get that tax break regardless. But for the businesses, um, we are beneficial to you bene- businesses that really want to donate 
um, and get a good tax break. Just want to let y'all know. Um, and we are a 509A2 um, nonprofit as well because we're building an organization. One day we will be big once we get the funding in, you know, um, have a building where people can come to and get services and, you know, they may want their bills paid, you know, light bill, you know, just like how crisis is here in Charlotte and they have it all over the place, you know, but different companies, you know, those companies are nonprofit companies and what they do, like the library, they're a nonprofit company, you know, um, and they service the community and that's what we're going to be doing, um, gaining profit to service the community and help the community because people are always going to need help. There's always families that's in need every single day, people, not just around the holiday. Every single day, people are in need, you know, and, and I want y'all to know that companies be in need, you know, every single day. Now, here I am. I have less than turning point, but I don't mind helping them, you know. Because we all need help sometimes. That's just what it is. I can't give them the financial help. So I put it in the market and they try to get them the financial help. You know, companies need help. People need help. That's just what it is. People are always going to need help. You know, and remember people, every day that you wake up, say today I'm going to do something nice for the peace somebody, you know. And remember to say good morning when y'all get up, you know. They done got me so bad, people. I used to say good morning every single day. Now that I'm here in Charlotte, it's like these people don't say good morning. Y'all got to get it together. I didn't sleep with y'all last night. When I say good morning, say it back because then I'm going to get an attitude. (laughs) You know what I mean? And I don't want to get an attitude on y'all because I'm a beast, you know, and I'm I'm trying to stay humble, (laughs) y'all. I'm trying to stay humble. So when I say good morning, say it back. Especially you black people. Y'all need a good morning. You know what's wrong with y'all? Get it together. Yesterday I'm walking in the turning point. I'm like, good morning. There's two black people. Two black ladies. I don't know if it was a girl. Young girl and older lady and a white lady. And I'm walking in and I'm like, good morning. Because that's just me. You know, shoot. Sure, no matter what's going on in your life. Good morning is, is, is a wonderful thing. You get a smile from another person. That smile, that good energy may come on your soul and, and help you, you know? So I said, good morning. And um, the white lady said, good morning. She smiled. This is nice. And I said, try to turn around again, like, good morning. So the one black girl, she said, good morning, and smiled. Oh, the white black lady, I wanted to curse her out. Like, you ain't no better than me. And you can't say good morning. You can't smile. Is it that bad? Is it that bad? Are you that evil? But I said, you know what? Miss JJ, keep going. Because that's not what you're here for. But people, y'all got to get it together with this negative energy. And you, I mean, really. You know, I don't ever want people to say... Us New Yorkers are bad. Because we know how to come out of our houses in the morning and say good morning. That good morning may lead to something else. That good morning may lead to help that I can give you or you can give me. You don't know where that good morning is going to lead you. So people, when you get up and you go out here and you greet people and you see people every day, there's nothing wrong with saying good morning. And I'm going to say to y'all right now, I'm signing off. And y'all have... A good morning. This is Miss JJ Diamond, Private Friend Incorporated, Jacqueline Richardson, Deja, whatever y'all call me. I'm signing out.